Hi everyone, it's Fiona here from FionaMarks.com and today I am recreating um, something about a reading actually from several weeks ago because sometimes what happens is we have a wonderful session and it all makes sense and it's all live and we take notes and then afterwards we try to explain it to those people that were not there and suddenly everything that made sense it just can't recreate it. So sometimes people ask me um, for notes and I always prepare copious notes uh, in my research for the session but there's page, it's just pages and pages and pages of my shorthand and um, technical stuff and and then even if people understood that actually the reading itself it's just what happens when we get together live it's it's for me it's that presence that co-creates the session so sometimes my notes don't even relate to what we end up talking about because they they feed in all the context and background but we don't necessarily go through them line by line so let's see if we can do justice to some things about this conversation um, that uh, really there was so much resonance in this chart. I think uh, the main thing we spoke about, we spoke about from the first, first words that we said, uh, kind of summed up what we needed to hear about the chart. So um, let's have a look. We've got here a Libra Ascendant and this brought forth uh, that I did actually, in this case, talk, start talking at the very beginning about the first house. And it was natural that I was going to talk about inner peace. And why is that? Because um, we have got the, the Ascendant being in Libra. And Libra is owned by Venus. And I can see that Venus has gone over here into the fourth house. So I know that something about this person's life path and their personality is going to be about inner contentment and peace, about their emotional world inside themselves and about their relationship with their mother and that, well, the fourth house also relates to home and feeling that um, coziness and safety that comes from one's home. So I can see that is going to be important. So we start talking about Venus and of course um, Venus is such a planet, it's a benefic, gentle planet and it's really interested in harmony and those um, gentle qualities. So this is a person that is going to have a huge theme of that um, harmony and wanting to connect with others, a devotion to um, the quality of relationships uh, that we have with others um, is going to be really important and noticeable about this person. And at the same time there's an awful lot going on actually here in the first house. So what do we also have in the first house? We don't just have the, the first Lord, Venus, has gone into the fourth house of Capricorn. But we know that uh, we've got these other planets uh, here on the first house. We've got Moon. That's a gentle planet, right? Uh, and we've got Saturn, exalted. That's a good thing, right? But let's unpack those a little bit because obviously the Moon in this case is waning. It is returning towards the Sun. So in Vedic astrology, we consider that to be um, a cruel planet. And then Saturn, yes, is exalted. So that's uh, really noticeable. It's here in Libra, a favorite place for Saturn to be. And what else do we notice about Saturn? Well, just like, let's get a different color here. Just like uh, Venus is the first Lord in the fourth house, Saturn is the fourth Lord in the first house. So we've got a direct swap there, even more emphasizing that this life path and personality, what's going to be important is around the inner peace um, and the contentment, the emotions that are inside oneself. And of course, that means that Saturn then becomes the fourth lord, the planet that represents and rules our. Um, inner emotional world 
our cozy world and what can we say about Saturn you know it's a planet it's a planet that is just aware of its own failings and its lack its wounds you know it's just perhaps the most realistic planet or maybe it's a bit pessimistic in how badly it sees itself so we're going to uh, notice that something about this person's inner world uh, perhaps has an awareness maybe of its own lack and then we've got um, that Saturn is now we can notice it's in between these malefics let's just point out it's in between K2 which we consider to be malefic and the moon which we've also mentioned in this context is malefic so that's going to unsettle Saturn as well that it's in that company um, and then Saturn is being starved here by Mars in the larger tidy of Ashtas. let's let's pick another color for that just to show you that Saturn's getting a lot of energy from Mars um, and when that happens let's have a look here on the the table in in agitation I uh, know in starvation exactly we're looking for what is happening to Saturn when it's being starved by Mars and uh, you know it can give us this sense that we're flawed and we're never going to be able to catch up let's just get you a pen here again person can feel like oh, oops like they're flawed and they just can't catch up let me bring you back to that screen where Saturn is being started by Mars um, so inside the self there might be also that disquiet um, and Saturn was receiving some starvation as well from the Sun and the Moon so not only Saturn naturally feels that it's lacking but the sun moon and mars in this case are adding to that sense so a person may feel that um, their own inner peace is quite um, disturbed and challenged at times and maybe all the time in some way because it's happening here in the first house of the body um, now what else do we see we've got um, the moon then is being starved by saturn too so because it's actually quite hard for the moon to be starved right because it is it has no enemies but any planet that is conjunct with saturn um, receives starvation and let's have a look at what happens to the moon look at this is the only way the moon can be starved can't be starved by the sun mars mercury or venus but it can be starved by saturn and the moon is our emotional needs um and saturn is that sense that our emotional needs are never going to be fulfilled and it's extremely painful it's happening inside um, but also uh, because the moon represents something about our mind as well it focuses our mind on this deprivation so it's a challenging um combination that a life that is so interested in harmony and interested in kindness and devotion from venus very motivated around inner peace but has saturn and moon here on the ascendant creating quite some disturbance to that um, inner peace even maybe on a physical body level um, so um, these are some of the factors that we talked about about how life is complex and how um, we are we have these contributing indicators from different planets creating the things that that are important for us and then um, the other thing to keep in mind is that for all Libra ascendants Venus is ruling not only the first house but the eighth house so it makes Libra ascendants um, very open to change in life very open to the new things and um, can be energized by the possibilities of change and what do we also have here the moon um, is a changeable planet itself so this is a, a lifetime that perhaps uh, we see those changes even perhaps internally on this level of inner peace feeling both uh, deeply interested in pursuing that in this lifetime 
uh, gaining skills over time, getting better at this, but always experiencing both um, inner peace and the lack of inner peace and maybe some um, like, I want to say agitation, not in a larger tidy of rushed away, but you know, like a rubbing up between uh, how important peace is, how much peace we create in ourselves and around others, but also that lack of stillness inside the self. Okay, and then um, really we spoke about that a lot, and I remember um, that being very powerful, seeing those layered factors, but we did also speak about work because that comes into this as well. Um, that we've got um, the Rahu K2 axis here on the 6th house, 12th house, and because it's a Libra, not only is it on the 6th house, 12th house axis, it's on the 12th sign, 6th sign axis. So we would expect, and we talked about um, this, um, it's, it's the Karma Yogi, isn't it? It's the needing that life will demand that we do tasks and that we do them to the best of our ability and that we um, give our attention, we give our time and we do the jobs that we are here to do. But at, it is always asking us equally to release our attachment to our identity um, being related to achievement and that um, we are here in, in a, as a spiritual being in the material world. We do our duties and we do our work, but really we're, the whole purpose is transcending. So because for Libra Ascendance, we always have both the, the yes and the no, both the black and the white, then um, we know that this person is going to experience that they, they do a lot of tasks with work they must do their work well, but have no attachment to the outcomes of that work or to their fame or identity through that work. Um, and we spoke about that theme. We also spoke about that that's going to be visible because the 10th Lord is here on the first house um, and the 10th Lord is being starved by Saturn, which is also going to create, um, you know, again echoing this theme of karma yogi this sense that satin starving the 10th lord of work there's going to be no glory from work you know there's no basking in the <laughs> in the glorious glittery sparkly fame of work because satin is right there starving the moon and reminding um the moon of um that satin heavy energy um it's coming you know, from Capricorn, that that tenth sign of work, that heavy earth-based work. So indications in this chart for work are that the person will do, will do tasks well um, and will um, be asked by life to, to be a servant to their tasks. Just do the task but don't own the glory. Um, and Saturn's backing that up with its relationship with the Lord, uh, the 10th Lord. And uh, I didn't put it in the notes, but uh, we also would have spoken about that, you know, Venus is right here as well, um, being agitated by the sun. That's going to, if I bring you over to the larger Tati of Ashtar for that, Venus being agitated by the sun. Um, it's going to give... Um, this idea that we perhaps have to sacrifice something about uh, our own inner tastes. Um, and this is, when you think about it, Venus, the first Lord, so sacrifice something about our life path. Um, and the sun is the 11th, so there may be some um, older uh, siblings, some elders or some recognition, you know, some certificates, some kind of qualifications or um, uh, some kind of certification endorsement. We might have to go through all of those hoops um, so that might play in our work as well, that there are things that we just have to do. They're a little bit sacrifice um, what we might want, but uh, we're doing them perhaps for this, the 11th house of greater gains. 
Um, so maybe in the end, uh, we will be getting um, what we want, but where we may feel, or well, we might may be getting what is best for our gains, <laughs> but there may be some sacrifice uh, for the self in in that context. So that is uh, a summary of some of the things that I remember talking about in the chat. Now I'm very interested as to whether this is what this person remembers from the conversation because it has been several weeks. If this is interesting to you, if you would like to have a reading with me, um, please book on the website fionamarks.com. All the details are there, the booking in your own time zone. And um, if you find these Lajitadia clusters interesting, um, this also this periodic table of larger tidy rushes where you can see how the planets interact with each other for their success or for their failure. Um, this is downloadable on my website too. Okay, thank you.